Ever since I was young, I've been obsessed with horror films and scary stories and whatnot. When I was three, I would literally hide behind doors when I was in a room alone and practice my evil laugh. That's a true story, mind you. I would wait all year for Halloween since all the kids' channels ran the Halloween specials. I'd watch Cyber Chase and Fetch with Ruff Ruffman and even Dragon Tales, and I would always record the specials on VHS tapes and loop them until the tapes ran out. Like they would turn into dust. I have a lot of memories watching spooky stuff with my family, so I have a couple favorites listed down for you. Before I begin, I need to address that I've removed the obvious movies and shows here. No Beetlejuice, no Nightmare Before Christmas, no Halloween. It's, you already know this is good. Like, I'm making this list for you to discover stuff instead of like reaffirming your opinions, okay? So like, a lot of these you probably haven't heard of. If you have heard of a few, good for you. Also, it's worth noting that items 10 through 2 are kind of just thrown together. It's not like number 8 is inherently worse than number 4. It is not a ranked list, except for number 1. So we're gonna climb through these together. This is all building up to number 1. Number 1 is better than all of them, okay? Also, some mild spoilers will be explored through some of these, so if you find a movie or show that looks kind of interesting, just skip the segment. All the timestamps are in the description, so you don't have to just stop watching completely. So slip on your ghost onesie and mix the candy corn with the popcorn, which is really good by the way, because we're about to start digging in right now with number 10. In the eighth grade, I got foot surgery on Halloween and it sucked. It was painful, it was bloody, and it was gross, and I pretty much cried the whole day because I was so mad that the day had been ripped away from me. I couldn't walk, I couldn't answer the front door or anything. I just stared out the window and watched all the other kids have a lot of fun. Some of my mom's friends lent us a DVD for the Frighteners and we watched it and it was probably the best part of that Halloween. For a movie to be so absurd, entertaining, and funny that it makes me laugh after being miserable for the whole day, I, I gotta give it props. I actually don't remember anything from it though, other than the fact that I enjoyed it when I was 14 years old. It has good audience ratings and bad critical reviews, so that's how you know it's a fun movie. I mean, Hook with Robin Williams had the exact same thing going on and that movie was awesome. If you are ever immobile on a couch wallowing in your own pain and suffering, I would really recommend this one. This movie just came out like a month or two ago as of the time of making this video and I loved everything about it. The writing, the acting, the cinematography, the horrific violence against children. It was everything that I wanted it to be, being just true enough to the original to satisfy fans of the novels while still being accessible for new audiences. When I initially saw this movie, we saw it in D-box seats in the theater. That meant that the chairs rocked and moved, which was a totally different experience. Not only were the jump scares loud, they practically threw you around adding a whole new level of suspense to the experience. Hopefully it'll be remembered as a classic someday. And quit lying to yourself, the 2017 version is worlds better than the 90s one. Number 8! Here's a word you don't hear very often, aesthetic. You probably hear that every day if you're an emo kid. This episode looks like Halloween. The sky and the horizon, they're dark, they're pumpkins, they're ghosts, it's, oh, this looks so good. SpongeBob is getting spooked nonstop by his friends, from Squidward to crabs pranking him, to Miss Puff spooking him, to even Patrick freaking him out by accident. He and Patrick come up with some pretty elaborate prank to pull on the Krusty Krab and scare everyone half to death, until Patrick loses control of SpongeBob and exposes his identity. Everybody starts laughing until the real Flying Dutchman appears and expresses how disgusted he is that everyone is exploiting his likeness for cheap Halloween gags and smearing his reputation as among other sea creatures. This is oddly relevant right now, whoa. As punishment, the Dutchman threatens to take everyone's souls and then he takes away Spongebob's costume and then he panics at the sight of Spongebob's brain. See, he had this weird idea to cut off the sides of his head to make his head more round since, you know, ghost heads are round, and that kind of freaks everyone out in the room. So uh, why should you watch this despite the fact that I just told you the entire episode? Simple. The artwork is outstanding. I love how much this looks and I love how it plays out. It's simple, it's fun, it's ironic, and it's spooky, and it's everything that I want from a Halloween special. It's radical. Number seven! This movie is so awesome! How come nobody talks about it anymore? My dad took me to see this when I was seven years old in the theaters and it scared me half to death. It was so much more loud and dark and scary than I was anticipating and I loved every single second of it. This movie is so much better than it has any right to be. Not only is it smart, witty, scary, but it also has a lot more heart and soul than a lot of animated movies, period. It's mature and it takes its subject matter oddly seriously. I mean, you know, an evil house that eats people. Since they take it seriously, you start to take it seriously too. They put the house to sleep with a mass vacuum cleaner full of sleep medicine! This is a real and crucial plot point in the actual 
film! And if you were to concentrate everything that makes Halloween awesome, it would probably look a lot like this movie. There's adventures, there's scares, there's friends, and crawling around the neighborhood late at night. I love that. I love this film. Please rent it. Number six. What? Why is Diary of a Wimpy Kid on this list? It's not scary one bit. Yeah, no duh. It's just about a suburban kid trying to navigate the sixth grade and it's wonderful. One of my favorite family movies by a long shot. This movie's on the list because the Halloween segment in it is incredible. I adore it. Frank hides on the roof and throws a garbage can full of water on the trick-or-treaters. Rowley's mom made him a costume. Roderick scares Greg with an urban legend about devil worshiper Woods. Oh, it's so funny. It is suburban goodness, which is going to be a recurring theme in this list, by the way, because I love those vibes because that's what I grew up with. All of my Halloween memories are about exploring neighborhoods and pranks and shenanigans and stories about the local culture. This segment of the movie captures it perfectly. I love it. I love this movie. I love this book. Do yourself a favor and check it out. There's no way that's gonna make it in the final cut of the video. I love the Garfield TV specials. I love the Garfield and Friends series. This is not real Garfield, mind you. This is. Whenever I'm babysitting some kiddos, I bring over all of my Garfield DVDs and I found myself laughing a lot harder than they do because these are still hilarious. They are worlds better than the comics. What's really cool about Garfield's Halloween adventure is that it lives up to its name. It's divided into three segments. The first is about Garfield, the second is about Halloween shenanigans, and the final one feels like a legitimate adventure. Garfield's Halloween adventure. Oh, I get it. Garfield wakes up on Halloween to discover that he can go trick-or-treating and score some candy. He throws together a pirate costume and takes on the neighborhood. When he decides to travel down the river and stop by some more houses, he and Odie lose their way and they end up being left behind on a cursed island. By the way, this old guy was like the scariest thing ever as a kid. Ah, uh, this is more like it. Remember that comment about suburban goodness I made like three seconds ago? That's still relevant. This looks wonderful, and it has like a great pumpkin vibe about it. It's great, and it's one of my all-time favorites. Number four! Do you remember Alvin and the Chipmunks? Not this, not this, but this! This is real Alvin and the Chipmunks, and I love these. These were so much fun as a kid, and Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet the Wolfman was like my favorite Chipmunks movie. My favorite genre and film has to be called 80s Strange Invaders. I just made that up right now. Neighborhood kids band together in a small town and deal with an alien or a monster or some other villain. Movies like Goonies, Super 8, Stranger Things, Gremlins, The Monster Squad, E.T., Midnight Special, just ugh, such good movies. It's like a weirdly specific classification, but like it totally exists. These movies are a lot of fun because they remind me of being a kid again. And there's always an even mix of action, effects, and spooks, too. I think that's why I enjoyed 2017's It so much. That counts as, like, an 80s Strange Invader movie, by the way. Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet the Wolfman is kind of like a Strange Invaders film, in a way. It's packed to the brim with a lot of adventure, silly October vibes, and just... <clears throat> Heck, it's so nostalgic. Like... The Wolfman moves next door, that's awesome. And now Theodore's a werewolf? What? All right, so if he's like half human, half chipmunk, half werewolf, that's 150% what the heck, dude. I can't sing. All right, we're not clowning around with any more kid stuff. These movies are so over the top and ridiculous that it's a marvel. This is my boomstick. You can find this in the sporting goods department. See, the first Evil Dead movie was an honest attempt at horror and it came off being like really campy. Upon realizing how successful yet cheesy their movie was, the filmmakers just ran with the whole thing in Evil Dead 2. It is the best example of mixing horror and comedy. Let me just reiterate, the canon storyline drags the main character from a haunted cabin in the woods to an interdimensional medieval kingdom and then to a supermarket to fight demons. I'll swallow your soul! Come get some. This movie is so good! The remake was a bit controversial because it didn't have any of the comedy elements that made the original so iconic. However, they went completely overboard with the graphic and disturbing effects. I thought it was an excellent homage to the originals and a super radical post credit scene too, if you haven't ever seen that. My little brother considered himself like a horror movie expert until I showed him this movie and he tapped out. He could not handle it. Although he has since been able to finish it, so I mean, in case he's watching it. Ash vs. the Evil Dead, it's, it's alright. It's not nearly as groovy as the originals, 
seem to be in the minority with this. They're, they're still fun to watch. I tore through the first season in like a day. It just felt too much like a cable horror series. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But if I ever have a friend staying the night, I always plot the Evil Dead films on VHS. These are like a sleepover staple from my childhood and I still rip them out every summer and I love them. Hey, this is, uh, this is number two, buddy. The Addams Family movie, excellent. The Addams Family values, stupendous, flawless, excellent. They took everything that was already good about the great Addams Family movie and they just tripled it for the sequel. This movie is so funny, it's so clever, it's so witty, and it's so iconic that I consider it one of my favorite films of all time. Make this official, I want the Blu-ray copy in my coffin when they bury me in case Eternal Oblivion has like an entertainment center because I can sit through this puppy over and over and over and over and so let's just look back and all the Halloween films and decipher what was so great about them and why I'm picking my number one spot. In case it's not apparent, I love suburban adventure vibes, I like camaraderie with kids hunting down ghouls, a good art direction is super important to me. What film could possibly encapsulate all these qualities? It's this one, it's really good. Directed by Michael Daughtry, Daughtry, I don't know, he even made Krampus. Trick or Treat is the ultimate Halloween movie. It is a tradition in my house. I even watch it during July when I'm feeling nostalgic for spooky season again. It's like a horror version of Pulp fiction. It has intertwining narratives and they influence one another. There are a ton of horror tropes that are explored in this movie and it's hilarious. Slasher, Strange Invaders, Home Invasion. Did I mention that I adore Trick or Treat? This movie is so clever, it's so ironic, while simultaneously having some pretty shocking and horrific imagery particularly directed towards children. Like, a lot of kids die horribly in this movie. And oh my god, look at that art direction! This dude gets Halloween. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. Everything is so spot on and it's a perfect mix of lighthearted with evil. This movie has achieved cult status and for a good reason. I love the lore, I love the characters, it is bragging for a massive fan base because it totally deserves it. Plus, the director himself is working on a sequel. Get on top of it, dude! I want more of this! Please watch this movie, do yourself a favor, have a party, buy some candy, watch this with your friends, maybe send me a picture of it on Twitter. Oh snap! Transition to all the youtube -y stuff! On top of sending me a picture of your sick party on Twitter? Maybe you should follow me there too. And you should probably subscribe on here, yo. I'm doing a lot of spooky, scary Halloween content all month. There may or may not be a super radical collaboration with the King and Queen of Losers coming up, so you should definitely get familiar with them before, you know, I drop the sick video this month. Wow, that was actually pretty brief. Thank you so much. Remain savory, cuties. I'll see you next week. I know a thing or two about music.